I am really delighted to have with me uh, the first I- Indian representative of Mr. World, that's Rohit Khandelwal, in his first UK interview. So thank you so much, Rohit, and a huge congratulations for your film, Chaldi Rahe Zindagi, which is premiering here on 6th of May. Thank you so much, Anuj. It's a pleasure to interview with you and uh, being my first uh, UK interview, I'm really excited and I'm glad. Right. So, Chalti Rai is in the game, which will be premiering at the UK Asian Film Festival. Uh, you know, your character in that is very wonderful because it shows an ambitious journalist who eventually uh, realizes his moral and ethical responsibilities throughout the pandemic, throughout COVID-19. So, you know, in your life, there's something like this in your life, there's a transition from uh, ambition to your life. And you know, you can reflect that sentiment to your character. Ke liye. Definitely, of course. There uh, are many times my character in this movie is somebody who's always uh, running behind the TRP. And then suddenly, due to some situations, his perspective towards life changes and he becomes more empathetic towards situations and towards people. And that happens with us as well, because when we are stuck with one perspective about uh, life and about people, and suddenly you realize that there's so much more to the human beings and people do certain things for certain reasons. And that's what my character also realizes in the movie, that uh, he suddenly starts having compassion and his whole perspective in the movie uh, completely changes. So there's a beautiful transition that he as a human being has in the movie. Right. Now, you know, uh, one thing that I really like about Chalti Rahe Zindagi is the fact that uh, I don't think intentionally or perhaps it was, I'm not sure, only Aarti can answer that. But uh, I, I like the fact that we see male characters presented in a very vulnerable, uh, in a very poignant way rather than just being masculine characters dominant characters and I think that's what I really found very fascinating about that so uh you know how important do you think is it to address and present such roles which are sentimental which are embracing you know weakness in every form you know amongst the male characters how important is it to see that do you think I guess this is something I've been recently been thinking about as well, the male vulnerability. It's a very important factor. In fact, this is a message I want to put across to the youth that uh, being vulnerable is so important. And male, uh, especially men are known to be masculine. Men are known to be somebody to always show the strong side. But we do have weak side. We do get, uh, we do have moments when we cry, but not show it to our close ones and to our to the world but it's very important to show that side as well in fact uh, lately in my life uh, in my early 30s is when i've realized that being vulnerable and sometimes asking for help is important and being vulnerable to parents and i saw this very vast difference between me and my father and certainly when i started becoming vulnerable to him uh, he was not able to be vulnerable with me because we have decades that we have spent two decades where we haven't been vulnerable with each other. We only spoke about great things, with about being strong. So I feel it's very important to be vulnerable because uh, it helps you, a person, to grow and let themselves out, feel a little lighter, especially for men. It's extremely important. That will help them be themselves. Right. I think one thing that I, when I often speak to actors who began as models, I think the one thing that I... I've always gathered from them is that there is that sense of awareness. Of course, uh, you know, kubsurati to ek baat hoti hai. Uh, but I think uske uske upar wo jo ek understanding hai life ki or experiences ki. So you know, would you say Rohit that you've kind of been one of those people that have really understood the the hardship of life? Uh, you know, prior to actually becoming Mister World. Uh, prior to becoming Mr. World, I did not understand the hardship of life. I would probably say I was the the character I'm playing, Akash, the previous version of him. I was like that. I just wanted to, uh, you know, make things work. I was not spiritually awakened so much. And uh, I think afterwards, I have 
uh, realize that the meaning and the definition of success is not just about achieving something it could just be being happy it's just just doing your best and uh, you know there's a very beautiful quote from rudyard kipling uh, where he tells to his son in the poem that um, dream but don't make dreams your masters because this life besides just dreaming and uh, that's there's family life there's something that you want to do for yourself so that's that's a part which i've explored later on in my life and which is extremely important it's just not about becoming something and achieving something if i have answered your question i don't know yeah. what exactly no yeah. for sure um but you know i think like again uh jab ambition hota hai to bahut zyada uh, you know us waqt hamare jo under expectations hoti hai wo bahut zyada had se guzar jati hai i feel um i think for you as well this is your first uh feature of film debut right i mean you've done obviously work i think on on tv before and other shows you've done uh but when it comes to this as your feature film and it's a lot it's a very humble film it's a very simple film but yet very effective to ye kitna subconscious choice raha aapka uh and do you feel like you're kind of at a point where you're having to really graft and sort of grovel first before you're able to actually be in a position or a luxurious position to actually reject scripts so uh, uh during covid i think uh, artis got in touch with me and saying that this a uh, uh, character that i have for you if you would like to play and i read the script i got really excited and i told her immediately yes i want to play this character it went really good uh i i later on worked on my craft much more so i did a good job i feel i i, I watched the movie in parts i still feel that there's so much more i could do as an artist and that keeps growing uh so i particularly loved it this is going to be my debut movie it's extremely important for me uh about expectations in life in general i have this uh thing that i always keep my expectations low keeping expectations really high i feel sometimes when you don't reach your expectations it can just uh make things maybe worse for you as well so i give my best i give my 100% but i always keep expectations low from life from people from situations because you know how things happen you never know so i have given my best in the movie and uh, i'm hoping it it turns out good and now yes i'm not in that stage to answer the second part of your question to reject script right now i am still at the learning stage of learning the craft of acting i'm deeply involved in it i'm loving the process especially so i'm a, not rejecting script but yes i do get roles which i feel at this moment for me i don't resonate much and i shouldn't do it as of now so i've been very careful with that because you know we sometimes get stereotyped for the kind of roles you play and you get more of those roles so and i don't want to be associated with that much so it's very important for me particularly that to choose the right right work and besides i do a lot of other things so which keeps me busy as well it's not just that i have to uh, you know get something right now and get going it's high time no i do a lot of other things as well right and you know jab a uh, ek role aati hai when it comes to a role what particular virtue do you look out for in a script or in a character what really appeals to you or are you keen on exploring as of now i would say the logic and reality if i see a character why does that this character does something in the scene is this realistic is this something that happens that's very important for me because i feel if it's not realistic there's no sense in you know why does the character is doing something so if i don't connect that way then i won't won't enjoy as an artist the craft and the entire scene and the entire movie so it's very important for me that i somewhere resonate with the character and i feel that okay this really happens and whatever he's doing it really makes sense so yeah very logic logic is very important for me in the character when i see i think jo is industry ki baat hoti hai you know rohit uh, it's a it's a crazy industry to join there's so much noise har taraf shor hi hota hai and i feel like there's always a sense of pressure as well uh, i think being outsiders uh, we all know how tough it is to get prominent opportunities and maintaining oneself in the process is very important i feel uh, yeah. but when you're not in a position of power i mean how tough would you say it is 
to overcome the disparities and suppression within the industry? And do you kind of feel, what do you think also helps you to stay focused, I think, is a very good good sort of approach, perhaps? That's a nice question. Uh, you know, Anuja, I feel every field is difficult, I, I feel. And the simple ones are something people compromise on and just get that job. And they just do a Monday to Friday job. It's a simple way, nine to five job. I chose to be here. I chose to take that risk. It comes with its pros and cons. And yes, I would say it just gets really demanding. You, I got to always look best. I got to always, I love eating jalebi, samosa and everything because I come from a Marwadi family. And uh, when I go home, I literally see my parents and everyone eating <laughs> fried, <laughs> sweet desserts. And I can't do that. I can't do that at, you know, more than one day or more than one meal. So it does come with its pros and cons. Um, but the kind of love that I get later on, when I go to airports, even now, uh, people recognize me, they come to me, they want to click a picture. When I go for judging events, they say that we want to be like, like you. So that kind really motivates me a lot. And I come back and I go to the gym again. I make sure like I just came from Maldives. I directly went to the event next day, no matter how tired I am, I went to the gym. I feel, let me just put some, uh, you know, some work on it, if not giving my 100%, but just keeps going on. And after one point of time, it becomes a lifestyle. Right. Uh, right now, it's my lifestyle. I love working out. I love eating healthy. I never explored these options of eating avocado, oats with uh, blueberries and raspberries. I just started doing that a while back and I started loving it. So I would say the field that I'm into right now, it's very disciplined. It also requires you to take up meditation or take up um, a stillness as a practice to calm your mind up. So, you know, indirectly, it's just making me a good human being, I would say. Mm -hmm. I've become very disciplined in life. That's so, yeah, and a good support system. A good support system. I think I have friends who are very genuine, who just tell me when I'm doing anything wrong. And I have my parents whom I talk to regularly. I Then there's a list of uh, gratitude lists that I create every single day and writing what I'm grateful about. So these practices kind of really keeps you calm while uh, giving your best. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful to hear. And I think, uh, you know, beauty pageants ki jab baat hoti hai, uh, we've all heard so much about that. Uh, and I know it's very difficult as well because obviously it's very cutthroat. And even though, um, you know, I think, I mean, I read Unfinished by Priyanka and it was really interesting and nice to see how even in a competition like that, you know, there were people who were very supportive and kind to one another, which I thought was very heartening. But, you know, Priyanka actually made a very thought-provoking comment recently in an interview. Um, I think I kind of agree with her as well. That a lot of these female beauty pageants particularly are kind of measured by the patriarchal gaze or by the standards of men. So, you know, being a man yourself who obviously has achieved so much and done really well for India, uh, how have you overcome any bracketing or conditioning to look a certain way? I mean, how difficult is it really to be yourself when participating in such contests? Yeah, I guess it's uh, difficult, but uh, the competition I participated for, Mr. World, it's all about being yourself. Uh, and they only want you to be your authentic self all the time and how congenial you are with the other contestants during the competition and how truthful you are to your values. And, uh, you know, just such hai wo bahar aa jata hai. Or uh, hamare competition mein Julia Morley will also listen to your personal interview when it goes on. They want to just ask Tell us about yourself. In two minutes when somebody tells, you know how much you're talking about the truth or how much you're talking about the truth. And those 11 or 15 days, there are people observing you. It's just not about those subtitles and competitions. It's about the behavior and the attitude you have on those 11 to 15 days. Like how punctual you are to the contest, how well-dressed you are. Of course, grooming is important. The You know, we got to look a certain way. Uh, wear the right clothes for the right occasions. Those things are definitely important as you're into pageants because uh, looks, beauty is important. That's why it's called beauty pageants. But beyond that, what people don't know is uh, the person need to be themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And I have been completely myself for Mr. World. I just know that I can not fake. I just can be myself. And if it's meant for me, it will come to me. If it is not, 
I'm fine going back to India, getting back to work, no big deal. So the, yeah. I think that's a lot of attitude which really helped me to stay in the competition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But, you know, I think, again, uh, you know, act modeling and, of course, you know, presenting yourself on an individual basis and having a great personality is one thing, but then you being able to act and uh, embrace the craft of art like that, it's it's a different matter altogether. Um, you know, how has your training been as an actor? What has really helped you to discover that artist within you? And who would you say you look up to when it comes to acting? So I came to Mumbai uh, 11 years back to become an actor. I thought all that I could do is I just get serials from that. I never thought more would come to me. I didn't have an idea about pageants. So when I came to Bombay and I kept all my options open and then I started getting to know that I'm, I used to go and give every audition. First thing I, I just knew that six months only went by to just give auditions. I didn't get any work. And I was only paying my rent, taking my uh, father's money. And uh, it used to be traveling by autos, rickshaws, uh, buses, and sharing apartment with five people in a two BHK. Uh, that six months, uh, just because I had good company around, I enjoyed the process. It I wouldn't say as struggle what people say. <laughs> I enjoyed the process by standing in the lines as well. So that point of time, I got to know that my face is commercial and then I thought, okay, pageants is something that I can participate for. And then mm-hmm. I ended up winning that. So there was no certain plan and it happened, but I came for acting. Honestly, like I could not afford at that point of time to join an acting school or go to LA or New York. Like a lot of people mm-hmm. go right. because my parents were against acting. They could not even, uh, you know, invest that kind of money. So for me, it was just watching movies and giving very bad auditions and learn from giving bad auditions how to give oh. your audition my teachers were the guys assistant who were just holding camera and recording my auditions uh, i still remember the first two auditions where literally he put the uh, camera down and he told me that go read the lines and come come after a week you're not even prepared with the lines and tum jab baat kar rahe ho tumhari hyderabadi nikal rahi because i used to speak in hyderabadi so i i took diction classes for at least 3 4 months and then i started giving auditions again so it wasn't an easy journey, I would say. And uh, that is how I learned because I thought that's the only way out because I can't afford to join an acting school. And I did my television serial first, Channel V show. And then pageants happened. And coming back to your question about uh, acting, I am I right now go to Atul Mongia's acting scene workshop. It's a very different perspective that I've got first time in my life about acting. It's about being in this moment, feeling the character, feeling the scene and doing it your way by listening to your impulses, whatever the impulses you get at that moment from your partner, from your scene partner. So it's a very different thing that I'm learning, which I'm enjoying as well. So I don't even remember when I perform the scenes now on Saturday, every Saturday that I perform scenes, when the scene starts and when the scene ends, I'm so much in the moment forgetting about whoever is sitting and watching me. So I'm ideally loving this process right now and not thinking about, other things but as of now still there's so much more that I want to learn right and who would you say is your acting inspiration then which actors do you look up to so there's so many actors that I'm watching at this moment Um, I am watching uh, definitely Mr. Shah Rukh Khan uh, for the kind of uh, you know different roles that he does with conviction I like Ranveer Kapoor especially when, when there's some intense scene I really like how deep he goes into his life and he does it really well in 10 scene. Vicky Kaushal is somebody I'm looking up to because he's got this amazing transformation and uh, I I resonate with his story as well. He was also not very sure about acting earlier. And uh, yeah, I think these three men are somebody right now I'm looking up to. That's wonderful. That's really good. But you know, Rohit, you said about rejection. You know, you've done auditions and you've learned rejection. Auditions are quite raw. In a way, you're learning in a very raw manner, which I think is sometimes the best because you get really hands-on experience and that's what really can impact the way you approach your craft. But rejection is not an easy teacher. Uh, and I think at that point when you are rejected from something, it becomes personal, even though quite a lot of times it's professional. How do you distinguish between that and kind of 
not allow that rejection to affect affect you personally so for that anuj i came with a plan to bombay of giving one year completely to this field i told myself that this one year i will reje- get rejected every single day and i'll turn back the next day and i go for giving audition agar ek saal mein kuch nahi hua sirf rejections mile so i'll go back to hyderabad join my father's cpvc side pipes business or maybe do call center job which i was doing so i was very clear that end of the day it's not end of the world i'll go back i always have option b but yes every rejection that i've had i realized that i was feeling bad no no doubt i still remember there is one audition i traveled 2 hours and they just looked at me and they said you don't fit the bill uh, we are looking for up market guys and you don't look up market yeah that that's what i got to hear and wo point of time i was very new to bombay my hair will literally come to my ears i used to even for audition i used to wear boots black t-shirt black jeans i didn't have that kind of dressing sense i was not looking the way i'm looking right now so i remember after that audition i had tears in my eyes because i traveled all the way for 2 hours and i gave the audition and uh, then i told myself that it's okay what could i probably do i got back i worked half an hour extra in the gym next day i started googling more about how to set my hair well how to look good started changing my diet making those changes and got in back to the auditions again wow yeah wow. it's crazy when you get told stuff like you know you don't look up market i mean i mean how does even one even define up market <laughs> you know it's just bizarre isn't it when when you hear that but i think this is yeah. a true ruthless nature you know rohit because obviously there are a lot of <clears throat> people i know who are ambitious about acting but i think a lot of them are very naive to 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 understanding what and how tough it really is to break through i also feel it's awareness uh, a yeah. lot of guys are not aware that at that point of time just listening a no that you're not up market doesn't mean that you are actually not up market uh, maybe that person at that point of time was themselves going through something and suddenly want to snap at you and told you you're not up market uh, so i always felt like he can work on something a lot of times people are not aware that they are good enough and they can always work on things around so i feel that i had that awareness that okay even if i'm not looking up market i can work on myself and become better that awareness was there with me maybe that's why i never lost my faith in mumbai and and i've stood to this place despite all the setbacks that i've got mm-hmm. now when we look at the industry now uh there is definitely uh a huge change i think in comparison to even if we look a decade ago um of course the pandemic has changed a lot of things aur aaj kal jo content jo aa rahe hain wo kafi aapne kaha ki jo realistic hai wo aap karna chahte ho and in fact if if we look at anything as well now wo jo escapees jo larger than life heroes hai wo bahut kam hote ja rahe you know it's in fact i i personally think it's more of an era of realism but how we amalgamate escapism with realism so do you think in this in this so what is it like to kind of notice this trend this changing evolving industry at this point in time and do you think we'll ever perhaps see that era again where we see more larger than life heroes and and figures like that so in bollywood it is happening uh, maybe not in tollywood we still have movies like rrr and the other movies where the heroes are larger than life that is going on and uh, i think uh, in uh, the crowd now wants realistic movies and they want to see characters who are very real not only typical stereotype good looking guys only doing the hero role uh, the average looking guys can also do that which is nice i feel people could connect with it and that's when i feel now the craft has become so important uh, you know that authentic real acting has become really important instead of the loud ones and that's what we see in our contents that we watch these days uh i feel it's a, it's all right i think going with the flow is important we never knew instagram would become so big today but people will start promoting brands on instagram like it's been happening to me i never thought i would probably promote brands and get paid a bomb which is a great thing happened uh so i'm always ready to go with the flow however things are and i don't have any expectations so i'm learning my craft working on the acting doing so many other things and whatever comes my way 
uh touch wood everything has been happening good uh, past few years have been wonderful in my life so it's beautiful i think the way it's going on at this moment mm-hmm. and you know you you're from obviously even though you're marwari but you've lived in hyderabad right so have you kind of had an influence of telugu films as well have you grown up sort of watching a lot of telugu movies and have you considered maybe perhaps working in south because obviously south india now is becoming the new mainstream and i think it's great that they're finally getting their voices heard and that identity recognized as well yeah you know it's very funny that i'm from hyderabad but i'm not very fluent with telugu and because hyderabad has a community of a uh, lot of marwadis and hindus it's a big huge community that i was always surrounded by very marwadi hindu people and nobody in my house spoke telugu i have telugu friends and somehow they always spoke in hindi with me and uh, i spoke to them in english or hindi so i can understand telugu very well but i'm not very fluently able to speak it and for me i bollywood has always been something i love i've grown watching bollywood movies i watch very few telugu movies so i've never thought about tollywood having said that recently few months back i was approached for a very very big movie in telugu as a negative lead and i was finalized i signed the contract and at the end moment they just changed me with somebody else i could not change take the name of the movie but it's a very big movie which is going to release now uh so they shared me the details of where it is going to be shot the budget signing amount everything i met the director everything happened but i don't know why what, what happened last moment they just replaced me uh but that's happens i feel i have heard interviews of a lot of actors going through this so i was not very surprised i would say and i was not heartbroken yeah for a day i was feeling low that i wish i was a part of that movie but i feel if this this didn't happen something better is going to happen but you know rohit i think even though yes you know it's expected but it's 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 painful isn't it when when that happens because of course again you know we were talking about the whole distinction between not taking it personally but you know it's just that whole idea that aap apne dream ke itne kareeb ho but yet itne dur ho it's that feeling it's that anti climatic feeling right so at that point in time when you obviously were dropped uh again what would you say helped you to not really think too deeply uh, or get to uh overwhelmed by 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 that rejection per se i kind of uh, realized how far i have come uh the kind of money i was making back then working in a call center and the achievement that i've made right now and the work that i'm doing i feel i can be grateful about the other things and not just be bothered about this one thing which didn't happen and uh god has given me much more god has given me this big title of mr india mr world and the number of events i just go as a guest for judging number of people love me this brand promotions that i get uh and i just feel that my i look at my family i start looking at all the positive aspects at that moment i'm a very simple guy i feel like i'm very simple i feel for my happiness i would do anything for my self care is important so all these things matter to me for a day i feel bad and i feel like this thinking doesn't deserve my happiness i got to be happy so i just forget it mm-hmm. i don't yeah. know it just very natural to me i feel the self care self love is so much that i have for myself that these things which didn't happen doesn't have a great importance in my life later right no that's really beautiful i think that's what's important as well you know it, safeguarding one's mental health is the most I important thing life very uncertain isn't life uncertain unexpected things happen in life so i'm much aware aware about this and aware to be going ahead also and i like i told you my expectation bar is always very low yeah so yeah so okay. it does matter i wouldn't say that i'm completely fine after that it did i did feel bad for maybe a day or two days and, and later on i distract myself i go meet my friends i keep doing i have a schedule entire day so i just make sure that i keep doing something so my mind is not at one particular place and who knows maybe something even bigger is in store for you do you know what i mean so i i i almost believe that sometimes you know uh before you make that big leap you have to also take a few steps back so there's always a good 
good reason why that happens. But I think on a final note, Roy, because I know you're quite pressed for time. We're quite pressed for time, and I've, you know, I know you're quite busy as well. So Chaldira is in the gi is essentially about moving on in life and having hope, which is basically what we were just talking about as well. Um, if you can recount an incident in your life when perhaps it was difficult more than ever to move on, and us work per up ko kisne ya ya umid diya tha. Um, oh, it's a lovely question. I'm loving all the questions that you're asking. I, I think it's so important as well. So there was one point in time in my life, uh, I almost, almost I would say lost a lot of hope in my life. But uh, then I realized I was only my own self, I guess, who's brought me up. I'm very proudly speaking. There was nobody who got me back from such setback. It was me. I, I just want, I just feel like there's always a way, there's always faith and having patience can help me. So I'm, I was ready to wait. I started doing a lot of meditation um, and then I started journaling a lot. There has been a situation. So there were, there was not any person, but I got myself up from that place. And I watch a lot of uh, documentaries and reading articles, which helped me. Like I was at that point of time, I, I was watching Nelson Mandela's story. Oh, wow. uh, Nelson Mandela has been in jail for 27 years for something which was not even a crime. And after those 27 years he was in jail, he came back and he was confident and he became the president of uh, uh, South Africa. And, uh, you know, that's, and then I realized that if that human being can have so much of faith in himself, then what have, what, why can't I have it? So, you know, those kind of stories, I started watching a lot of motivational me videos and that's really helped to get out of the situation. It's beautiful, isn't it? I think we always need to look and find that force, I think, sometimes. You know, chahe of course, Bhagwan ho ya Bhagwan ke saad saad, I think, you know, jo humare uh, zindagi mein jo ek insaan hota hai, hum usko dekhte hai, to wo ek umid kaayam rehti hai, you know, it keeps you going. I think you need that in life. So it's wonderful to hear about this whole documentary that you watched and how that really sort of helped you. But no, I think, look, Rohit, I think it's it's wonderful to know and see a fresh talent like yourself being launched and uh, having an opportunity to work in films which are not, uh, let's just say, the arguably the dream debut as of many, many people because a lot of people want showreels as debuts, right? They probably want the glamorous roles and rather than actually doing a film which is very sincere, but yet rooted in his storytelling. So I think that's wonderful. I think the route you're taking is definitely great. So I'm looking forward to seeing more great work coming from you. And it's so sad you're not going to be here in London for the premiere. I know, I know, I know. So I really wanted to be, but I got some important project at that point of time. So I got the, I went for the visa, everything was said, uh, but unfortunately the work came and I couldn't say no to the work. And it's also very important to VC. Cholo. Well, hopefully maybe one day We'll catch up sometime soon, definitely in London. I sure. have my visa ready, so I might just drop down any time now. Yeah, you should. You might as well. I mean, it's summer soon as well, so hopefully we'll get some sunshine. Uh, so that'll be really good, for sure. No, but look, Rohit, listen, wishing you all the very best, Uh, of course, for Chalti Rahe Zindagi and all your other upcoming projects. I cannot wait to see more from you. Thank you so much, Anuj. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Pleasure was all, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a lovely